Hey, we have a great video for you today. This is going to be the first of many that we're doing about our open source project witness and archivist. You know, and the reason we're doing it is because ensuring the integrity of the software supply chain is essential for building and deploying secure software. Tampering with build materials or the build process itself can introduce malicious code and result in compromised software. In this video, we will show you how to use the open source tool witness to generate and verify attestations. These attestations can be used to create a verifiable record of the steps taken to build the software. This will help prevent tampering and ensure the integrity of your software supply chain. So we're gonna go over a few things here. The first thing we're gonna talk about is the overview of the witness tool and how it can be used to generate and verify attestations. And then next, we're going to go a step-by-step -step guide on how to uh, create and verify these attestations using public and private key pairs. And then finally, we'll talk about how this may look in your enterprise or your, your CI, open source CI project and things that you can do with other products that we have uh, that can help secure and automate um, the provenance generation of, of your software supply chain. The software supply chain is the process of creating and delivering software from the initial development stages all the way to the end user. Ensuring the integrity of the process is crucial for building and deploying secure software. Any tampering with the build materials or the build process itself can introduce malicious code and result in compromised software. One way to prevent tampering and verify the integrity of the software supply chain is by generating attestations about that build process. These attestations provide a verifiable record of the steps taken to build the software, including the materials used, the tests run, and the commands run during the build. This allows us to ensure that the software is built according to the intended specifications and it has not been tampered with. The witness tool is an open source tool that can be used to generate and verify attestations about the software build process. This allows us to create a verifiable record of the steps taken to build that software. So the first thing you want to do is head over to our GitHub organization that's testify sec and go to the witness examples, examples repository. Go ahead and clone this. This is going to make following along a lot easier. We uh, all, all the uh, policy files and Rego files and shell script, we, ha we have them all here. So, so it'll make it a lot easier. The next thing you're gonna wanna do after that is um, actually go ahead and go to our releases pages on our uh, witness repository. You can go ahead and find um, the binary that's appropriate for whatever system you're using. Th this should work on any system. The instructions I'm giving here are gonna be specifically for Linux, but the command should run the same on, on any system. Um, so for me, right, I am a Linux uh, AMD 64. So I'm gonna go ahead and copy that uh, and go ahead and download that with wget. Okay, and I wanna also make sure that I have OpenSSL in, uh, installed, so. Right, so that works. All right, so now I have the witness tarball uh, downloaded. I'm actually gonna go ahead and untar it. Oh, that's the wrong one. There we go, the AMD64, there we go. And then, look at that. So I have a witness binary. Let's check the version on it. Okay, that looks good to me. So I'm actually gonna go copy this into a place where, where it's available. I don't have to, um, copy it in each directory I use. So I like to do this, copy, witness to which witness? We can just remove witness. Or I'm going to star, star dot talk. All right, so now that we've done that, the next thing we have to do is actually generate a key pair that we're going to sign our attestation with. I'm going to go ahead and generate the private key. And then we're going to go ahead and generate the public key. Uh, these could be provided by your CI system. Otherwise, we also support signing things with Spiffy Spire. We also support th signing things with SIGStore. So there's a lot of different ways you can sign things with Witness without having to worry about key management. Um, so now that we actually have a, uh, a key source, we're going to generate the attestations. We're just going to do something simple here. And we're going to echo hello 
into uh, hello.txt. Now, it's really important here. Uh, so when hello.txt is created, we're going to take the secure hash of that file and store it in the attestation. And we're going to be able to look up that attestation uh, based upon what that hash is. But in order to do that, uh, we look at the difference between everything in the working directory after the command was run compared to before the command was run. So if that file is already there, we're not going to pick up on that change. And um, in, in that case, we won't actually create a, a product. Uh, so hello.txt does not exist right now uh, in this. So I can just run that command. And then the next thing I want to do is actually look and see what I, the data I got out of that attestation. So I can do that just using uh, JQ. Um, so I'm going to, let's just actually look at that attestation first, right? So this is a bunch of gobbledygook, right? That payload right here that we're looking at, that's a base64 encoded string. Um, so let's decode that. Right, um, great. And, and see here how I had that SHA-256-4 um, that hello.txt file, right? That's important um, to make sure you have that. So then I can look through here and I have the uh, attestations here. I'll zoom out a little bit, right? I have all these attestations. Um, I have a, shows me all my environment variables. It shows me all the products that went into, um, all the materials that went into this command and, uh, the file that came out, right? The product. And then we all we index that as an Intel attestation with, with certain identifiers as, as subjects. Um, if we want to, we can actually do a trace, S trace on this command and get an even more accurate set of materials. As you can see, now we have, right? We have all everything that was touched. So now we can trace this back to the version of libc that was used when we ran this command. So if there was some sort of vulnerability with with um, that version of libc, we now have that record. We have that attestation, and then we can do remediation if we need to. Um, you can see here, right? I didn't delete that hello.txt file before I ran this command, so we didn't actually pick up on. Um, uh, we didn't actually index that file. So let me run this one more time but remove hello.txt. All right. There we go. And we can see we have that attestation for the product there. So this is great. We have these attestations, but what are we actually going to do with it? Um, so we need to create a, a policy. And so the first thing you want to think about is what your policy constraints are going to be. And they can really be anything, um, any property of that uh, attestation um, or those attestations that are included there. Um, for example, right, we want to make sure that this command was run as expected, right? So we're going to look at the third argument and make sure that it matches this. So actually, let's go ahead and take a look at that Rego policy. There we go, command.rego. So what we're doing here is uh, we're making sure input.exit code not equals zero. So input exit code not equals zero. Okay, that's good. Um, and then we're making sure input command, uh, the third argument is that. All right, so it looks like, like just looking at it, this attestation should pass. But, but let's do this in an, in an automated way. So we're actually going to create a witness policy that embeds this, this uh, little uh, Rego policy snippet in there. Okay, we're, we create a policy template here. We'll go ahead and look at it. Um, so a policy can have many, many steps. This is just a single step policy. If we had another step after this that did something else to that hello.txt, we could create a policy for, for that as well and make sure that the input files for that first step are going into the second step. 
Uh, so we want three attestations. This is what this policy is telling us. The first attestation that we want to make sure that is is it with connected to this artifact is a material attestation. The next one is a product attestation. And the next one is a command run attestation. Now we're doing something special here, right? We want to embed that rego that says that this command run attestation needs to meet our specific specifications. So you can see we have a, uh, a place to put that. And then down here we have the functionaries, right? This is course, this corresponds to the key ID for the functionary that's allowed to perform this step. So that key we created during the attestation, we bind that to this policy. And here we have a list of all the public keys that we have. Um, witness also supports um, certificate uh, constraints. So you can pass in a certificate authority and say only certain attributes from that certificate are allowed to, to validate this. Uh, that'll be uh, something we'll dive into in a later video. All right, so let's go ahead and actually template that policy. So we look at the script, real simple script here. We're just uh, base64 encoding some stuff and then using said to replace it. All right, and then let's go take a look at that. So we'll go ahead, it's the policy.json file it looks like, right? And then you can see all that stuff is in there. That is that base64 encoder Rego module that we looked at earlier. And then here is our public key uh, corresponding to the private key that we signed the attestation to. The next thing we need to do is sign this policy. So let me explain to you for, let's back up a second. We need to sign this policy for, for certain reasons, right? If we, if an attacker um, inserts a policy into the admission controller that uh, is basically like a break glass policy that'll allow any workload into that cluster, right? They, they're able to bypass all these controls. So when we sign the policy, we're telling uh, the admission controller that yes, you must, the policy must have uh, be signed with uh, private key corresponding to this public key in order to be in order for it to be accepted. So let's go ahead and generate uh, the key for the policy, and then we'll get the public key from it. All right, and so then we're actually going to use witness to use that key to sign the policy that we just uh, created. Now with all those together, we should be able to validate that the attestation that we created when we inserted hello into hello.txt meets the policy that we created for it. As you have seen, Witness is a powerful tool for ensuring the integrity of the software supply chain by generating attestations about the build process and then enforcing policies with the Witness Policy Engine, you can prevent tampering of build materials and verify the integrity of the artifacts produced by build pipelines. Additionally, tools like Archivist, Spiffy, and SigStore really make the process of managing keys and attestations easier. Uh, that will allow us to securely store and distribute keys and metadata about our artifacts. In future videos, we'll explore some of that some more. Uh, but I really hope you enjoy this video. If you have any questions, feel free to reach out. Um, I'm on the CNCF Slack. My name is Cole Kennedy. Um, or feel free to you know hit us up on our website, info at testifysec.com is how you get a hold of us. Um, otherwise, ha have a great rest of your day. Thank you for listening.